Rand Paul, um, a senator from Kentucky, has introduced legislation to try to privatize the TSA and to restrict some of their activities. And we've seen other legislation introduced to try to uh, rein them in at the state level. But Texas last year, unanimously in the House, voted to enforce existing laws with groping. The TSA goes in the pants. Evidence uh, by uh, Captain Kirk having to say, Scotty, zip me up. Uh, last week whenever they pulled his pants down at, at LAX. Uh, this goes on all the time. It's all part of the humiliation. But there's new legislation introduced by Representative Marsha Blackburn, and we're getting her on the line right now. Her assistant just called in, or the press secretary, and she has introduced legislation that we want to tell you about, H.R. 3608, that will make them stop calling themselves officers. And I happen to have a news article here where exactly that has happened. TSA worker arrested for sexual assault. You see this all the time. That was D WJLA uh, television. And what they do is they tell women, they pull people over and stuff, and they tell them that they are sworn police officers. They tell people that, uh, that they're operating in that capacity, and they're not sworn, they're not bonded, uh, they're not any of that. Uh, look, the feds can't randomly pull you over and stick their hands down your pants. Uh, the FBI agent can't. They were always taught that. Uh, local police can't do that unless, unless they think you've you know, stuck drugs or a gun in there in an emergency situation. When you go to the jail, they've got to have somebody of the same sex search you. But now it's just done at the airport. They're raping people. They're caught in pedophilia, defrock priest as the head TSA guy in Philadelphia. This is what's happening. It's very scary. And now Congress, uh, you know, Senator Paul is talking about doing something, but we see Representative uh, Marsha Blackburn hailing from the great state of Tennessee. She is taking action as well and has introduced H.R. 3608, and she joins us now. C Congresswoman, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us. That is so good to be with you. Thanks for having me on to talk about my bill. Uh, tell us about your awakening to the TSA and what your bill does, and then let's get into some of the uh, overall horror stories that you've investigated uh, with this uh, group. Yes, uh, my bill actually is an outgrowth of complaints that we were receiving from our constituents. You know, people would go to the airport, they would go through this issue with TSA, TSA would be unprofessional many times, and let me say right here, there are a lot of good people that work with the TSA. We know and understand and appreciate that. But we also know that there are individuals who are not uh, qualified to work with the TSA who are unprofessional in their conduct. But the long story short for me was constituents, maybe those who had suffered from different surgeries or had implants of different types or small children, our grandmothers would talk about the very brusque treatment that they thought was just really uncalled for. And so they would come to us with these complaints. I would sit down many times with TSA in Washington and just found that I was getting unsatisfactory answers to the questions that I was asking. And so my staff and I started looking at uh, what was going on with the TSA. And there were a couple of things that we discovered. Number one was that through the rulemaking process, not through legislation, but through the rulemaking process, the TSA had gone about and administratively reclassified their airport security screeners, which are the people who were to be there to assist the traveling public. Now, that's how they're defined in the legislation that was passed that stood up the TSA, airport security screeners, and they're there as a customer service agent to assist the traveling public. What TSA did was to administratively reclassify them. They started this process in 05, and through the rulemaking, they took TSA customer service reps out of their customer service uniforms, which had you know, the work shirt or golf shirt with the khaki pants, and it had a TSA patch on it. Well, they removed them from those uniforms, and they put them in federal law enforcement-type uniforms. 
which is what you see them in today, which is the dark blue trousers, the blue shirt, uh, and they wear a metal badge. And Congress did not give them the authority to do this. They did this on their own through the rulemaking. So what we thought was, hmm, let's get them out of these uniforms and return them from being called transportation security officer, again, a title that they gave themselves. They deemed themselves this title. And let's return them to being customer service reps and called uh, airport security screeners and return them to their original uniforms. Because you know what we are seeing is that they exercise this overreach and authority and they uh, are causing hardship for taxpayers who are paying their salary. Now, a couple of other things we found as we were about this investigation was that um, they have gone to a system of giving uh, awards and advancements, and you'll notice they're wearing epaulets on their shoulders now. If they have one stripe on their epaulette, that means they're an officer. Two stripes means they're a team leader, and three means they're a supervisor. So when you ask someone from TSA what constitutes being called officer, and I bet, Alex, you know that there are people that become police officers, and when you use the term officer in referring to them, that means that they have a certain amount of training and command a certain amount of respect, doesn't it? Yes. And what we found out was where what TSA is doing is they only have about 80 hours of training, and then they are allowed to be called officer and wear this uniform. Now, let's say if you wanted to go down to the Nashville Police Department and apply to be a police officer, there are a couple of things you would need to do. One, you would need to meet certain requirements for making that application. They have educational requirements, work requirements. They do a due diligence check on you to be certain that you don't have a criminal past, uh, that there are not uh, components in there that would make you a less than desirable employee. Well, we found out that TSA is not conducting a lot of due diligence because they have many individuals that have committed crimes. Some of them have committed those crimes while they are on duty or while they're wearing their taxpayer paid for government issued uniform. And uh, we did a report. It's called Not On My Watch. It's available at my website, blackburn.house.gov or at Facebook, Marsha Blackburn, or Twitter is at Marsha Blackburn. And this report details 50 of the crimes and TSA officers who have been arrested for these crimes. You've got sex, you've got murder, you've got pornography, you've got impersonating a federal officer. Uh, you've, there's just a variety of, of crimes that are there. Well, officers Congresswoman, I mean, uh, sure, sure. I mean, I'm a news hound. I probably see every month 30 or 40 of them arrested, so you're being conservative when you show only 50 of the cases of child pornography, raping people, stealing. I saw a report out of uh, New York Daily News a few months ago where they have over 250 things stolen by the TSA every week at JFK. I myself had a gift to one of my daughters when this is about seven years ago, she was only a few months old, a, a, a rattle teething ring stolen. They unpacked the little package from Tiffany's and stole it. So, so, so when you say 50 things that you chronicle, that is literally the tip of the iceberg. Well, you're exactly right. And what we did was just get into 50 of the crime. And we were astounded with what we found. And you know what is so interesting is since we did that report, and made it public and filed our legislation, which is called the Strip Act, Stop TSA's Reach and Policy. And since we did that, we are hearing from people all over the country about issues and problems 
and the TSA not following up with them. Uh, you, it's, some of the things are appalling, and the manner and the way in which they are treating some of our citizens is absolutely appalling, completely uncalled for. So, you know, we, we have, uh, we're continuing to push through on our legislation. I think we're up over 150 co-sponsors on it now. We have bipartisan agreement and support in Congress that something needs to be done to rein in the TSA. And, you know, one of the things we found that seems to exacerbate the issue with their uh, overreaching their authority is this. They now have unionized these TSA so-called officers. And you've got 46,000 TSA officers, if you will, who are just to be airport security screeners. Bear in mind, not a lot of due diligence is done on their hiring. Washington Reagan Airport, they advertise at discount gas stations in the area and it on top of pizza boxes. No, I know. Let me just stop you for a moment, Congresswoman, because obviously you're spearheading this. We want to commend you. The bill is H.R. 3608, and, and in the time we've got left, I want you to be able to cover other areas of this fight and how we get behind you to try to restore this big area of the Constitution that's being violated. But what about the mission creep, uh, more like mission gallop, where right here where I live in Texas, I'm in Austin, but in Dallas, I told people this like a year ago. They didn't believe it. It's finally in the newspaper. I had family that saw it, uh, but now in Houston, they set up warrantless checkpoints on highways and roads, bus stations, train terminals, and they go on buses and they pull cars over. Well, you know, in Tennessee two years ago, TSA, quote, inspectors, the Viper teams were out there and they were commanding a military and local police and the state police with highway checkpoints. Uh, so, so, so it's happened in your state. What about that? I mean, what about jurisdiction? Even if they were federal officers, since when are they running around out of their jurisdiction? So you got fake no. officers out of their jurisdiction. That's right. See, TSA officers have no authority to arrest anybody. If they have a problem at all, they have to do what you and I do and call the police. And what we have seen, these are called a Viper key that you're referencing, V-I-P-R. They're the intermodal preparedness response team. Now, these teams, as you said, have been on our highways. Uh, what we are trying to do is to return them to the airport to assist the traveling <laughs> public as they go through the airport. The Strip Act does that because... Let me tell you something. There is no business. The TSA has no business being on our city buses, uh, our subways, our trains, our highways. And, you know, when the FBI or the CIA gets a tip and they're going to go about uh, trying to stop terrorist attack or to uh, interdict some kind of situation. They are working on actionable intelligence. The TSA just does their searches randomly. They can pull over anybody. They can stop anybody. They can randomly search anybody. Because they say so, just like they made That's themselves, right. just like they made themselves officers. I mean, Congress had to create the FBI. They had to go through an approval process. The states had to be created. They have constitutions under city and county charters. They're able under the law to 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 hire people that are trained in the Constitution, due process bonded. And then now they just announce themselves God. Look, the only reason I raise this parallel and I know there's some good people that work there, but that's like saying there's some good people in Nazi Germany. Hitler just created the brown shirts as well. Stalin did the same thing. All authoritarian systems seek to create a new type of goon force outside of the original military and police training system. And, and, and that's exactly what I see, Congresswoman, happening here. Well, it has been of such concern to us and that is why we continue to go after it. The TSA has no business doing anything but working as airport security screeners in our nation's airport and assisting the traveling public in that regard. 
And our goal is to get them out of these uniforms, to get them out of these shirts, to get them out of these badges, and to return them to doing uh, that simple task of system. We are incredibly concerned mm -hmm. with this overreach and this mission well, creep and uh, the unionization and a lack of regard for the traveling public. And, you know, we just, uh, it's time to put a halt to it. My legislation is the very first step in getting that done. Yes, ma'am. We've only got about eight minutes left with you. You've again, been gracious to give us this much time. We just want to commend you. We know Tennessee is proud to have somebody up there that will actually stand up for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. That is such a rarity these days. I mean, think of how far the TSA has already you know, gone. Now I'm sure you know that uh, first they were like, we're going to make dock workers go through us to get a job. And then now we're going to make, uh, I'm sure you saw in, in um, New Mexico last year, a judge ruled the TSA had to train the public schools on their security. So it's okay if they come train you. Now you can violate people's rights and put your hand down somebody's pants. Uh, William Shatner uh, you know, had his pants pulled down last week. I am afraid to fly with my wife and children just because my daughters and my son have been taught don't let somebody touch you. And they've had top psychologists come out and say, this is training children so that people like Jerry Sandusky can have their way with them. I mean, how do I you know, teach my children stranger danger, don't let somebody touch you, but now accept these people? Well, this is one of the reasons we want to put a stop to this. You know, the TSA, bear in mind, the TSA has not captured one terrorist. They have not led to the arrest or capture of one terrorist. And this overreach, all of these machinations that they're going through at the airport, this is also uncalled for. So, you know, we do appreciate the help of people who are going to work with us to get this reined back in. It is um, it's just something that we've got to do. It's the step we've got to take before this gets any further out of control. You're right. Uh, I want to get into the lying here because you're – up on all of this but for some of the new listeners they said three years ago we're not groping children even though we had hundreds of videos of them even pulling children's pants off and their shirts off two three-year-olds taking babies diapers off then it happened to one of my employees the drudge report linked to it and it ended up being a national story that became the biggest story in the country for about three months as the tsa started saying we don't do that then they said well now we're going to stop under 12. courthouses were doing it in, in colorado and uh Florida, until people pointed out it was illegal to do that to under 18-year-olds, so they had to stop. They also had the naked body scanners uh, you know, uh, going in that it's been shown violate federal law here, but also in England. So it's all part of this lawless power grab. But then this year, they were uh, stripping down uh, women, uh, you know, 85, 90-year-old, 90 95-year-old women, taking them behind closed doors, making old people get out of wheelchairs that can't even walk, making other people help them, screaming at old people. Happened to my grandmother, who's almost 90, flying back from a wedding, screaming at her to move quicker, on crutches. I mean, it's like our, our induction into a prison or something, a slave training. But, but, but what about holding them accountable for the 40 billion that they estimate we lose a year in tourism, the State Department's having to run TV ads in Europe saying, come here, we're not a police state. Well, yes, we are. I mean, I'm ranting here, basically throwing ourselves, you know, on the mercy of Congress. But what about the lying? What about the culture of saying, we don't strip search old ladies and then being caught, or we don't strip search children, or there's no radiation from the scanners and they get caught lying? How did, I mean, how did the culture of this get so villainous? I, you know, I wish I had an answer for you, and I, I don't know. I, but I had a constituent yesterday that I thought summed it up pretty well. Uh, I was doing a listening session, and they came up to me after it was over, and they said, "Marsha, I, I just got to tell you." They said, "I feel like we're looking at a time when it is a government run amok." when it is government run wild. And they talked about the TSA videos and these judicial conferences that are in elaborate locations. And they said, you know, I just want to see some government restraint. And another constituent had said, when, when is Congress going to put some mandates on these bureaucracies and agencies and require them to comply 
with the law and to act in a responsible manner under the law? And I, I thought, you know, that's a pretty good question, and it's a pretty good way of summing it up. And I think it is distressing to individuals to see their government and employees of the federal government conduct themselves in the manner that some, not all, but some of these TSA agents who probably, if a thorough background check were done, would not have been hired in the first place. I think it is um, it, it just so demeaning to individuals to be treated in such a disrespectful manner by some of the TSA agents who raise their voices, who bark out orders, who act as if they're the authority because they're wearing a uniform and a badge. And with my children and grandchildren, I want them to understand that when someone has worked hard and wears a uniform, whether it's one of our men and women in military, whether it's a policeman, a fireman, a highway patrolman, that I want them to, to show appropriate respect for that individual. And it's, you know, when they are treated so disrespectfully by a TSA agent who should not be wearing that uniform in the first place, it gets to be pretty difficult to make that argument. So we're just going to keep plugging away at trying to move this legislation forward, build support for it on a bipartisan basis, and hopefully be able to, um, to return them to working in the airports. Yes, ma'am. In a work shirt and trousers with a patch, and look at our traveling public and say, We are here to serve you. How may we assist? Well, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. We're, we need to support you and others, but there's also letters to the editor calling in to talk radio to criticize it, keep the issue on the front burner. And in Houston, people, they had lawyers get involved and others and point out this is unconstitutional to have anybody randomly searching people. So they had to pull out of Houston. That's, you're exactly right. And look, what we've got here, I, I call it um, the network of you, Alex. And I want people to get on their email list and contact their friends and neighbors and say, this is a great bill. Contact their network. Get people energized. Exactly. Get Don't just say, oh, thank goodness that Congresswoman you know, Blackburn is up there or there's Ron Paul or Alex Jones or somebody or Rand Paul. We need everybody to do a little bit together. Many hands make light work. Final, final question on another subject that just popped in my mind. What do you make of Attorney General Eric Holder and Fast and Furious and the fact that it's come out that they did perjure themselves and that they're now stopping protest against him in front of the White House? I, I mean, if he doesn't get in trouble for this, does this not really start discrediting the entire Justice Department who's now shielding him? I, I think that with the contempt charges that we filed last week, both civilly and criminally, that it does point out that there are some serious problems with the Attorney General and with the conduct that has been exhibited through Fast and Furious. I think you're exactly right on that. Uh, are you, because you're up there, and I, I mean, I know you voted for contempt, uh, are you hearing yeah. any rumblings about bringing back what Congress had in the past and, and exercising the authority to uh, to clap him in irons? I, you know, we're going to let Chairman Issa, who has been handling this, proceed. And I understand that he's moving forward with hiring a council. And uh, when we get back next week, I think the chairman will have an update with us on the progress that he's Thank you. Is, uh, the word I'm getting, though, is that th 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 this is shaping up to be a Watergate. I, I think that it may, and, you know, I'm going to show the chairman the respect that he has earned and let him be the one to say what's going to be coming next. Sure, I, I understand, uh, but obviously, do your constituents raise Fast and Furious to you? Oh, yes, we talked about that and Solyndra and uh, Planned Parenthood investigation yesterday when I was out with my constituents. Oh, good. I want to have you back in the next month if you can do it, Congresswoman, to talk about that. That's something else you're doing that's very important. Godspeed. Right. Blackburn.house.gov. Blackburn.house.gov. Thank you so Got much. It. See ya. Bye-bye. All right, there she goes. Man, that was a good interview. I like her. Uh, all right, we'll be right back with the next interview, another lady fighting for freedom. 
yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?